What I have behind me is the PO Polyphenom, a large format MSLA resin 3D printer that I truly believe is going to become a disruptive technology to the miniatures market. Why? Well, this small DND miniaturized printerless machine took less than 15 minutes and less than 30 cents of material cost to reproduce. Now, obviously, there's a little bit more to that, but not that much more. So let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. Now, as I said, this miniature took less than 15 minutes and that's because I printed 23 of them at once on this build volume. The build volume on this machine is immense. In the XY, it's over five times the area of the Elegoo Mars, which means you can fit tons more figurines in. And that's important because this technology, MSLA, uses an LCD screen to selectively cure an entire layer at once. So it doesn't matter how many figurines or models you put on that bed at once, they will cure all at the same time. Which means that with this print of 23 models, it took four and a half hours, but when you distribute between each model, it is 13 minutes. Now, I've been keeping my eye on the resin 3D printer market for quite some time now. In fact, resin 3D printing technology was the first 3D printing technology with SLA being invented back at the end of the 1970s. But why is it taken so long for us to get to this point? Well, the move from using lasers and bulky spinning mirrors to direct that laser to an LCD screen and UV light source means these machines can be made much lighter, cheaper, and more user-friendly than ever before. And in fact, we've seen a flurry of small form factor MSLA machines like Elegoo Mars, Epax X1, and more, which I've already reviewed on this channel, come to the market, and they're quite frankly taking it by storm. But it took till this machine that really my attention was diverted to the imminent danger that the, these companies that produce miniatures have. So I went out to my local Zing store and purchased this little bard figurine, which is a Dungeon Dragons model for $10 Australian. And in my calculations to justify my point, I've been converting to US, which makes it about seven bucks. Now, as I mentioned, the area of the print plate on the Pio Polyphenom is immense. It's 276 by 155 millimeters, leaving us with around 427.8 centimeters squared, which, as I said, is more than five times the print area of the Elegu Mars. So with that in mind, I could fit 23 of these miniatures in, link in the video description to where I found them, so I could print them all at once using Chichu Box Slicer. The resin used was the Pio Poly Deft resin in gray. It's a fantastic resin. I've started to use it on my other printers as well and it's very strong, resolves very high detail, and cures quite quickly, and it's $60 US per kilo. So with all the prints done, I did weigh them afterwards. The estimate was around 75 grams from Chi2 box, ended up being more 85, so let's just round it up to 100 grams total material use, which leaves us with a print cost of 30 cents per model. But obviously there's a lot more to it than that, isn't there? With resin 3D printers, you have the cleanup costs, such as the IPA, you have your glove uh, consumables and your paper towels. Then you of course have the LCD screen, which is a consumable, and Pierre Poly says it will last around 400 hours or so. And the FEP film at the base of the vat is also a consumable too. So with that in mind, let's round up our print cost to a dollar. That's quite excessive, but let's make them a dollar each print cost, including all the consumables, which leaves us with a $6 lead on the store-bought figurine. And keeping in mind, that was a cheap store-bought figurine. If you're gonna get anything from the Games Workshop, it's gonna be significantly more expensive, but more on that later. But obviously you have to pay for the machine. So this machine is priced at $1,800, which is expensive, but considering how expensive other resin printers of this volume have been in the past, not that much. And you would need to print about 300 figurines to pay that off, which isn't actually that unrealistic. So where's the catch? Well, obviously to get this benefit, you need to print lots at once, at least to get the time benefit. The resin use will be still be the same if you print one at a time, but one will take four and a half hours and 23 will still take four and a half hours. Then there's the obvious elephant in the room, intellectual property. Now this is the one stronghold that companies like Games Workshop have over this impending technology, which is encroaching on their market. And on their website, they have a full list of terms to protect their property and obviously their IP. So for example, you can't recast a figurine purchased from there and you definitely can't scan and you can't 3D print one. So that's fair enough. Intellectual property does deserve a price and does command a price premium. 
However, in my humble opinion, having that IP then manufactured into figurines in a factory somewhere in the world and then shipped off all around the world to the different stores and then held in inventory and then sold is an outdated concept. Whereas if you had the digital model, you could just print them in store and sell them or sell them directly to your customers. Now this obviously has its own implications to quote Mr. Universe, you can't stop the signal. If you release a digital model of anything, even with laughable DRM as it's gone down in the past, it will be copied and distributed. It's just how it is and it's always how it's gone. So keeping control of that digital model is difficult unless you make the price point to the to a value where it's not worth trying to find a pirated copy, which is where, you know, streaming services like Netflix happen to work quite well. However, let's flip the script. What if you are the designer of that IP? What if you're a talented artist who can 3D model like a boss? Well then, you could just say goodbye to these large companies and using your own machine, manufacture locally in-house on demand, by the way, and ship out from there. Now that does definitely throw a spanner in the works to the conventional model because again, $1,800, if you're selling custom figurines that you've manufactured, perhaps you can make your own limited supply, add a bit of FOMO in there, and well, people will buy them if you have an audience and you're gonna pay that off mighty fast. Now this isn't a full review of the Pio Poly Phenom. I need to do a lot more testing of this machine, but just an overview, it's built like an absolute tank and it sounds like an absolute tank when it's operating. The fans run full bore to keep the UV LED matrix cool and well, it's noticeable. So this machine, as with all resin printers, I operate it in my resin dungeon, which is under the house in a well-ventilated area where I don't work nearby because even though the new resins do have a very low odor, I still wouldn't recommend being near them as they are curing and polymerizing because we still don't really know what's going on in terms of the chemical makeup of them. Although good companies do have very good MSDSs and it does sort of indicate that you don't want to be around them too often. So what I would love to know from you guys is what you think on the future of the miniatures market because I am not a skilled organic 3D modeler at all. And I'm gonna put a link to some amazing channels that focus on gaming with these 3D printed miniatures. And they've been at the forefront of this resin takeover uh, way before I got to it. So definitely gonna give them credit. I've learned a lot from these guys, like 3D printed tabletop. Go check those guys out. There's links in the description. Is this the future of miniature modeling and sales? Do companies like Games Workshop have to be careful? Can they still, can they hide behind their IP and their protections or are they gonna have to adapt? Or, you know, I'd love to know your thoughts. So thanks for watching guys. And uh, I've, I haven't been this excited for quite some time. I do truly believe this is a real disruptor. So I'd love to have you subscribe on Makers Muse if you enjoy this video. Here's my aim to empower your creativity through technology as this, this stuff is very much doing. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later guys, bye.